George S. Counts an Educational Giant by me, Ariana Miller. On December 9, 1889, on a farm near Baldwin City, Kansas, James Wilson Counts and Murdy Florella Gamble Counts welcomed a baby boy into their lives, George Sylvester Counts. Little did James and Murdy know that their son would grow to be one of the greatest influences in American education. George S. Counts was born and raised on a farm in a simple town, Baldwin, Kansas. As a young boy, he tended to his daily chores and went hunting with his two other brothers. George lived a simple childhood and he stated once that farm life was very repetitive. However, he had a deep appreciation for the life he lived and the lessons it instilled in his character. He believed that it was from being raised on a farm that he learned principles like discipline and responsibility. He described farm chores as a ladder that each child climbed upward to maturity. Count came of age during a time of vibrant political and social change that energized the state between 1890 and 1910. There were many revolutionary movements, and this was an extraordinary time which included risky language, defiant women, and a time period of open expression. George grew to be an intelligent student who completed four years of coursework in just two years. He grew to love learning and appreciate the gift of knowledge. Because of this love, he began to gain perspectives regarding society and to observe local conflicts happening around him. He graduated from a conventional public school in 1907 and pursued his education at Baker University. At Baker University, he graduated top of his class with a bachelor's degree. He then taught science and mathematics at a local high school and then became both a teacher and a principal. George's love for education intensified and he began his master's degree at the University of Chicago where he majored in education and minor in sociology. Soon after, he received his Ph.D. The next 10 years, George's educational career skyrocketed. He taught at several prestigious universities such as Harris Teachers College, University of Washington, Yale, and the University of Chicago. He also became a member of the faculty at Teachers College, Columbia University, and during this time, he also lectured at Harvard, Stanford, Michigan, and Virginia. George began to invest his whole career into the betterment of education. He believed that education should be a lever for social reform, and he also strongly believed that teachers should lead society, not follow society. He began to write books, and more books, and more books, and persuaded masses to appreciate education and to emphasize it more in all aspects of living. His most well-known pamphlet, Dare the School Build a New Social Order, consisted of three papers and explored these beliefs and illustrated his theories of replacing traditional capitalism with the form of democratic collectivism in order to avert social and economic chaos. George changed the way education is viewed in America. He is a large contributing factor to why governments are involved in elementary and secondary schooling. He changed not only the way teachers see themselves, but the way the world sees teachers. Through Count's books, lectures, and outspoken beliefs, he highlighted the impact teachers have on societal conflicts and the way that influence humanity. The creator of National Appreciation Week studied many of Count's books, which led him to write a letter to Eleanor Roosevelt. In 1953, she then persuaded Congress to proclaim National Teacher Appreciation Week. Count's taught that education contributes to the economic prosperity and social environment in a community. We can see how well-educated citizens work in a higher-level jobs drive business development and ultimately result in higher incomes. Higher incomes circulate taxes, lowers crime and poverty, and increases voting rates. In recent years, we have seen the government make college and education more accessible. Barack Obama has invested in community colleges to shape new degree programs for emerging industries. He has also simplified federal aid applications. Yay, America! Never has there ever been a time where America has centralized around education so much. Since entering this major and learning about great educators of the past, I have seen teachers in a whole new light. I see them as individuals who want to better society and change lives. I know that because of the examples of teachers I have had, I want to be the best teacher I can and strive for excellence. Created using Powtoon.